Hello, my name is Trina. I'm a medical cannabis patient. I partake of cannabis on a regular basis for my PTSD, arthritis in both my knees and ankles, social anxiety, and a few other conditions you can learn more about through watching the previous shows on this channel. This is the Productive Cannabis Connoisseur, a channel dedicated to medical cannabis patients and adults 18 and over. So sometimes on Tuesdays I'll do a show called Cannabis and Creativity. Cannabis and Creativity is a show where I show you the creations that I make and I have a smoke session intertwined within it to show you how what cannabis does for me and creativity. It gets me to slow down, alleviate my pain, stress, anxiety, so that I can let my creative ideas just flow naturally. Yeah. <laughs> so before we get started on that, I'm going to show you what I'm smoking on today. I'm smoking on uh, some, it's like a combination of Kim Dog and OG Kush. Um, I'll show you a nug given to me by a very kind person, kind friend. But yeah, it's really, it's got kind of a Swedish berry smell. Well, not really berry, but kind of a sweet, sweet smell. That's all I can, that's how I can describe it, is sweet. It smells very sweet. And I also, la last night I made some homemade cannabis chocolates. Um, and I, when I make the chocolates, I grind it up in a coffee grinder. And on the lid of the coffee grinder and inside of it, I think I showed you in one of these, in a past video, where I showed you how you can use the remainder that's left in the coffee grinder. It's like keef. And uh, it's a lot... Uh, as strong as actually, it's as strong as hash actually a lot of times. It depends on the strain that you ground up in your coffee grinder, but it can be as strong as hash. And that's what I have in my bong here. <laughs> it's loaded up. I hope everybody's having a wonderful day and finding ways to stay stress free. <laughs> Cheers. today I want to show you a few things that I've created recently and some things that I'm going to put on my Etsy shop uh, tomorrow. Um, I share my art with the world so that I can show people what cannabis can do for me, <laughs> can do for them too, but um, I think it's good to talk about your own personal experience because everybody that experiences cannabis or partakes in cannabis their um, experience, <laughs> their experience of it is, is going to be totally different from one person to the next. And, um, but a lot of people like to be creative while partaking in cannabis. So yeah, I want to show you some of the creative things I've made recently. Um, as you know, if you've been watching my shows here on this channel as far as cannabis and creativity, or even my Dark Moon Doll channel, uh, which is under Dark Moon Doll, where I showed you how to make paper beads. Now, I've been getting more intricate with my paper beads, as you can see here. This is a necklace, and this is a necklace, just two necklaces. Uh, they each are made from paper beads that are strung onto a stretchy cord. And um, I added rhinestones onto it, and I glossed it with Mod Podge. Mod Podge is a sealant. So what's different about these beads than any of the other paper beads I made is that the paper that I used has specific uh, patterns on them. Like this one has more of a foresty scene on it and then uh, edged in the rhinestones. So yeah, pretty cool. <clears throat> so that's what I've been enjoying doing. I've been enjoying adding that extra uh, flair to the paper beads with the rhinestones. And I like making paper beads especially because it recycles. It's all about recycling. Um, so many people have a lot of magazines and books and things like that that, that are maybe ruined and you don't know what to do with them because you can't give them away. I say just make paper beads out of them. So this is another one that I made. 
And that's what I've been doing. I've been looking at the background of the design of the paper that I used for that particular paper B and finding rhinestones that correspond with the pattern or the color of the beads. So that's what I've been doing with these paper beads lately. Just making them a little bit more uh, magical. <laughs> so let me show you um, some of the magnets I recently made too. I've got more, but they're coming. I bought recently bought some magnets because I painted some stones from the river that collected from the river and I just added a magnet on the back. The idea came to me when I was painting them. Because some of them, the rocks that I painted, I wanted to make them into a um, to altar stones. But what I'm finding is that the really thick, chunky ones, big ones, are the best to make altar stones with. So this is like, it's hand painted, this is an uh, all-seeing eye. It's a, uh, um, you can use it as an evil eye to keep away negativity. And uh, it's painted with acrylic paint, then it's Mod Podge, and then the it's signed and dated on the back, and a magnet is glued on to the back of it. So you can attach it, well attach it, you can put it onto your fridge as a refrigerator magnet. So, yeah. And here's some of the latest, like, polymer clay paper beads, I mean paper beads, I've been making so many paper beads, polymer clay beads that I've been working on. Um, now I showed you these pa polymer clay uh, beads that I made, which I call, they're like stream of consciousness, psychedelic beads, because if you look closely, you can see the swirly, like fractally patterns within the beads. Uh, what happened with these beads is that they, uh, I had Mod Podge them to seal them. And then they fell on the carpet, <laughs> and then they got all fuzzy, so I had to wipe them off, and they got all smudgy. So uh, I had I ended up adding some uh, rhinestones to them. I got all the carpet fuzz and crap off of it, added Mod Podge to it, and then uh, applied rhinestones on it, you know, to kind of uh, combat the lumpy bumpiness that happened. <laughs> when they were trying to dry from being sealed with Mod Podge. So it worked pretty effectively. I did mention that in the video, How to Make Polymer Clay Beads. Um, I'll try to pipe in that video, but I did mention that if you get lumps and bumps and bubbles when you're drying the Mod Podge, you can just add like charms or rhinestones on there and it adds some dimension and uh, texture to your beads, your polymer clay beads. And these are going to be dreadlock beads. So you could put those in your dreadlocks or they can be used for, um, if someone has really long hair and they could braid it and then put the bead at the end. So it's not just for dreadlocks. <clears throat> and so here's those, uh, I don't know if you saw these on one of the shows, arts and creativity shows, but this is, uh, the sculpted gnome hats that I made and I just started to make decided to make them into earrings a set of earrings because I've been wanting to do that I don't wear earrings but I like making them so I like these if it stops shaking I can show you more of it there so yeah um, these have been really fun to create and really relaxing when I'm really having a lot of pain for say my arthritis I love to do something that takes, you know, have a big puff a smoke, smoke a bowl of cannabis, and then uh, get myself in a meditative space, you know, close my eyes and meditate for a little bit, and then I begin to create art. And as my pain is relieved, you know, my anxiety is relieved, I'm able to create something that I can share with the world. Something that can help inspire others, you know, to get up and do things that they really enjoy. This is a polymer clay bead with rhinestones on it. Um, it can be big enough for a dreadlock bead, like for skinny dreadlocks, or it could just be used for like um, adorning handbags, <clears throat> Like I said, if you wear braids, you can put it on the end of your braid. 
So yeah, really enjoy making beads just in general. Beads are very relaxing to make. People have been making beads for centuries with all different types of media. And I've been experimenting with different types of beads, <coughs> bead making. Like for instance, let me just show you this with the necklace I have on right now that I made for myself. Um, I've been making beads, paper beads that are thicker, like this one. If you're wondering what the symbol is, it's a symbol for prosperity. It's a runic symbol for prosperity. But yeah, I've been making thicker paper beads. Um, basically, with the thicker paper beads, you're using, um, I use the ad paper from, you know, mail that are thick. It's a thick paper that are usually, like, ads and stuff like that. But yeah, I like to make the really thick, chunky ones now. Experimenting with that. The thick, chunky ones are a little bit more challenging to create than the regular thin paper ones. Say like, uh, like for instance, <laughs> find an example. Like for instance, it's like these small ones. These are very simple to make. But the, uh, the bigger beads, those thick, chunky beads, they take more Mod Podge, you gotta press it down really hard um, for a certain duration of time. <laughs> so yeah, let me straighten out my necklace. But yeah, um, art is a great thing. Art has been used even before counseling has been used for people to heal themselves. So many people have gone through so many traumatic experiences in life and they're just expected to just dust themselves off and keep going. And pretty much people have been doing that, but they never get to the underlying problem of why, you know, they do the things that they do or find themselves in the situations that they do. Yeah, I mean, it's so true. And if people could just take some time out and relax, truly relax, then they'll realize that um, there's so many things that we get pissed off about during the day that aren't even really worth our time and energy.